again, we are about to see what I found in a barn that has been up there for decades. Check it out. Just got home and am about to unload the truck. These boxes here all came out of a barn from this morning. I met my dad and my sister at, um, at a place that we were told we could pick and I had fun. <laughs> It was a couple of hours of very dirty picking. You can see um, the condition of this scrapbook. Like, it's pretty bad. <laughs> um, but there were some really great cards in here. Look at that. And out of respect for the man who whose barn we went through, I did not record there. He had no interest in... Um, and you know, having his family stuff recorded. And I'm not gonna really show any names or anything here even, but look at how wonderful some of these are. Oh, there's another duckling. Super cute. Oh, look at him. So cute. Anyway, this is a whole scrapbook of cards. Cannot wait to see what's all in here. And then there's another one here. I love this. I just actually pulled this one off the paper. cute look at that one with the little sparkle pony uh, my fingernails and my hands even just touching this stuff again is so dirty I'm working on removing these cards from this scrapbook um, you can see that this is literally crumbling away um, it's unfortunate, but this barn was very hot and I think even there was some humidity and some water damage there. The cards are not in the greatest shape. Some of them have taken on the um, acid in this paper, so they have tanned. Um, however, a lot of them still look very cool. I can't wait to show you my favorites, but I wanted to show you really quick how I'm getting these off of here. Because of the heat and the moisture, which is how I would probably attempt to do this anyway is apply some heat or moisture because these are all glued on here. I don't have to do that. <laughs> I am just carefully getting underneath them and with somewhat of a kind of circular motion. Let me see if I can do this one handed. I am separating them. Now I might get a stubborn corner like this one. And usually if I'm very careful and patient, I can get them up. So there's limited damage. You will still see some glue. This one was very easy because you can see there wasn't a lot of glue applied here. Some of these other ones have had a lot of glue on them. So that has not been as easy. I just want to show you real quick that these tiny, teeny, tiny little bugs are all in this. And this is why I'm doing it outside. <laughs> so these are all probably little, you know, guys who have been eating on this paper and I'm going to make sure that they don't enter my house. <laughs> I picked up this box and I thought it was maybe a brown leather and I started cleaning it and boom, there's flowers. <laughs> it's pretty and it's full of cards. I couldn't believe it. I actually did not remember what was in this box until I went through it again and I have to add these cards to the rest. So many cards. Let's take a quick look at the ephemera that I pulled out of that barn. I have to warn you right now that I have not had the time to look up everything in this hall. This is just one of a few table halls that you're gonna see today. I pulled out quite a lot of things as you saw in the back of that truck. Also, I'm gonna go through these things pretty quickly, but if you spot something that you want to see or want to discuss, please email me at amy at yosoboho.com and we can talk about it. I could share more photos, but because of the volume here, you're just gonna get a quick overview. 
These were all of the cards that I pulled out of those two scrapbooks. I take that back. <laughs> I just showed you that box. There was another stack of cards in that box. And then there was a stack of postcards that I found in something else that I pulled out and salvaged. Now I was able to salvage one of the scrapbooks, the smaller of the two. It's very cool. It has an Art Deco cover on it, which I love. And it's actually in pretty good shape. It didn't have the same warping that the other one had. It must have been in underneath something. The other one I was not able to save. I did save some of the pages, but even they are still crumbling when I'm moving them around. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to save them, save them. But I separated all the cards out into categories. So I have birthdays and Christmas and Mother's Day, Easter, um, you know, all of the categories. There are some that I wanna show you that I thought were really fun. This is a birthday one that has an actual <laughs> little constructed pair of underwear. Unmentionable, hope they're not unmentionable with you. Birthdays, I mean, because they sure fit you. Adorable. And then of course, you know, the Valentine's, Valentine's Day is the fun one. This was cool because it had an actual feather here being used as that little quill. As you can see, lots of fun little cutouts. There are many more down deep in here. These are just the ones that I pulled to the top, but you saw this little cat that I saved out of there. I was able to save 100% of the cards out of those scrapbooks. I did not throw one card away. Now, some of them had a little bit of back damage, but for the most part, they all came out pretty good. This one must have been in that box because there's no glue on it. Look at how cute. So Christmas, this is a cool pop-up nativity Christmas card. Miscellaneous, this was neat. She was sick, and I'll tell you what, that scrapbook, the smaller one, she had a surgery and she was sick for a while, and man was she adored because this entire bag here is full of get well and thinking of you cards, which tells a lot about this person. And this, um, to you, indoors at Easter, there are actually cards in here. I wonder if I pulled one out. Yeah, to a convalescent. Just like language we wouldn't use nowadays, you know? But fun, and look at the pussy willows on this. <laughs> Super fun. And this is kind of cool. This was a card that says that it is from the River Jordan. And there's actually a vial. It still has water in it. So that was kind of neat. These are all from the 1910s. Actually, 1910. August 2nd, 1910. But I love those. I think they're beautiful. These were fun. I thought these might be postcards too, but they're not. They are... This one is actually really cool. It's Niagara Falls and it is a panoramic. So when you open it, it shows you the entire panoramic of both falls at Niagara Falls. Isn't that cool? And this one I won't pull out. It's not as exciting, but um, it has like single images um, throughout. All of Philadelphia. Very cool though, the illustrations are great. Then let's see, I pulled out some books. So these were kind of fun. I pulled out, this one is a small Bible. Looks like it's just the New Testament Psalms. Um, has some neat illustrations in it. This one does too. This one isn't a Bible, It's this is kind of cool. And has some illustrations and stuff in it. And this one is a fortune telling birthday book. So you put all your birthdays in it. And it's kind of fun to see the family's names and stuff in here. Not gonna really show that too much. And then this was <laughs> the sad sack. Cartoons of army life. Fun. 
There are more cartoons here with Mutt and Jeff. There were four Mutt and Jeff books. Um, I'm not going to show you a couple of these because the name of the gentleman who allowed me to pick this stuff, um, when he was a kid, he wrote all over these. <laughs> this one is actually clean, and I will show you some of the information I found on these. Um, because the other ones are pretty destroyed, I'm going to guess that I'm not going to get much. And that one, I could tell, look at that hole in there. It looks like, I'm not even sure, something burrowed in there. Oh my goodness. So there were some Caterpillar magazines in in the hall that those were the only things that he took back. And as I was going through stuff, I realized I had another one. So this is going back to the owner as well as a family photo that I put in this envelope. So that's going actually back to him. And then this is a cool old book, especially being from Akron. kind of cool for me to see that. This was a cut out Peter Rabbit painting book. A lot of the pages are actually already colored, but it's fun. Super fun. So it looks like they gave you an example of what it should look like and then you could color it to match. Or do your own thing or draw another one. So that was fun, not in great condition. None of these things are in great condition just because of the amount of time they spent up in that hot barn. This book is in horrible condition, but I loved the illustrations in here. Definitely like a 1920s. I didn't look at, see if they have a date here. Yep, <laughs> right on the money, 1920. Just really cute. And then a couple of books, Red Pepper Burns and the Bobsy Twins. I knew about the Bobsy Twins only from, I don't know, my mom or my parents talking about the Bobsy Twins. <laughs> so when I saw the book, I was like, oh, the Bobsy Twins. <laughs> so I did grab those too. Um, again, Niagara Falls. This is a Washington map. I have not yet looked up some of these things 101 brain twisters this was fun because um, whoever had done this had actually answered some of these <laughs> I was reading this last night self-instruction for guitar playing look at the graphics on that it's fantastic and then this is a let's see if I can see it here in the in the light a log of life this has not been filled out. Here's the certificate of marriage, your wedding photograph, um, and then it goes on to even like your kids' information. So it's like a whole life book. Here, prizes that you won, medals that you won, <laughs> sports that you played, your grades. I mean, it's really your teeth. <laughs> it's very interesting. And the graphics on it, you can tell, again, look like, 1920s, 1930s, very cool. Let's go back and see what else I got into and I'll be back here on the table to talk about the next thing. This is a very heavy box full of milk glass and wait until you see this. There was, I can't even tell you, like boxes and boxes, of dirt dauber nests. Look at this picture. It actually has a dirt dauber nest on it. Isn't that crazy? Now, there, there was nothing living in there anymore, but I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that off of there. Oh man, I didn't even see that. I wonder if that broke in transit. That sucks. That sucks, because I can see this in here. It may have broke while we were driving. Well, let's hope this is okay. This looks okay. That is a swung, hobnail swung. Kind of cool. Pulled 
whole thing of, of hobnail. All of it's hobnail glass. And I'm hoping it survived. Let's look at that picture. That's kind of cool. That and the swung vase were my favorite, favorite finds there. I tell you all the time if you watch my videos that there's no value in milk glass. <laughs> um, unless it's very unique. And for the most part, when I saw these pieces, I knew that they had some um, value to them because they were unique. Um, but I didn't know how much until I started to look them up. It's funny, the silver crest, which people used to be looking for, which is this footed bowl here, it has a clear edge on it, but it's it's named silver crest. <laughs> um, it is the least valuable, probably, well, maybe the candlesticks. It's, it's maybe about the same as the candlesticks. Between a 10 and $15 for the candlesticks and that uh, footed bowl there. Everything you see here is Fenton, by the way. Fenton is an Ohio glass maker, and back in the 50s when these pieces were purchased, you could get them relatively inexpensive um, at that time, probably because they were local. But, okay, so 1015, 1015, this basket is probably 15 to 18, and then these things are a little bit more. So this is probably a $20, um, if not a little bit more. I showed you these two, so you already know the values there, but I'll show them again here. This is a nice piece. It has some grime in the bottom of it that I need to figure out how to get out. <laughs> it was obviously sitting with some water um, in it. I'll show you here what the value is. And then the big surprise was this piece. This is the heaviest, and I'm not kidding. I'm going to say... Eight, six to eight pounds. <laughs> it might be a little far-fetched, but it is extremely heavy. I'm even afraid to drop it just grabbing it like that. It is, see, <laughs> it's heavy. And it had this beautiful lid on it. Um, just simply gorgeous. The last one of these sold for $60 because it had that lid and it is a wonderful piece. That was a surprise. That was a big surprise. So here we have a collection of glass that I'll share maybe up here, I think the total value is. Now, I do not want to ship these through eBay. I think most of this collection is going to go over to the shop and it will look wonderful in our booth on the back wall silhouetted against that blue that we have painted. I mean, it looks wonderful here silhouetted against my slate gray wall. All right, let's get back to the truck. A couple primitive things. Look at the dirt on this. This is a nice primitive box. Um, and then there's a really neat pulley in here. So all this stuff just needs to be cleaned up. And then I don't know if you saw in the picture, but I shared a picture on Instagram of this. This is a military issued prosthetic. Um, the man who wore this lost his leg in World War II. Yeah, 40, this was issued in 45 is what he said. So, um, very kind of cool. Something I've never had. It's just kind of an oddity. She was in a dirty box. She's missing an eyelash and an earring both on that side. Other than that, she doesn't have any cracks, I don't think. She's a Napco. So she was a, a pretty little find. I also found a small tree. It has its base, which is nice. Looked to have all of its little pieces. Um, this little girl, I don't know if she's part of a pin cushion. She probably, oh yeah, I'm not sure what she was part of, but she's pretty. Some other random things down here. Look at this little tiny 
I don't know if it's a planter or I'm going to guess it's a toothpick holder. I know how cute that is. Some random things in here. It's a paperweight from Florida. I found two, two uranium glass lids for little fridgy dishes. Um, just no dishes, just the lids. Looks like they both have little flea bites on them. So I don't know if anybody will want those, but I, I grabbed them. And yeah, there's a little little dog in here. He's cute. There's little gold details. No markings. Probably Japan. Um, let's see what else. Here's um, an old tin. Everybody's hand soap. <laughs> it's kind of rusty. These were, they must have been restaurant wear or something. There were, I would say, four or five sets of these. These are um, Robinson Ran, Rand's Bottom set. That's the uh, the sugar bowl. Because here's the lid. So, sugar bowl, creamer. Very dirty. These are wild. These are like a set of bears says bear brand hosiery it's just like an advertising piece and there was um a, a man and a little guy he's in pretty bad condition somebody has had to um stitch him up but there were three of these there's her too they all have those little boxes of Hosiery. This is a pendant from 1940, Niagara Falls, New York. So, lots of stuff in there to go through. Yes, I made it through everything. I've cleaned everything. And here's the rest of my barn picking haul. I will touch upon some of the things that you did not see. That I was pulling out of boxes and a couple of things that you did see that now I have information on <laughs> these guys were a find so these are an advertising piece they were a pattern that could be ordered in the 20s and you know your mom would sew these little bears together and if these are in good condition which this one actually is not in that bad a condition I believe he last sold for about $100. This woman bear over here, the mama bear, um, she sold for, I think I shared already, 50 something. And then this little kid bear, he's not in the greatest of condition. He has been probably played with <laughs> and needed to be restitched, but he too um, recently sold um, last year, I think, for about 50 bucks. So the whole family is probably a $200 find. And that's amazing. I never expected that. I do know that advertising things can have value, but wow, right? There's another teddy bear back here. And this is actually the man who let me um, pick his garage. This was his teddy bear. And he saw him in the box and I said, oh, here, here, take him back. And he said, oh, no, you can you can have him. I love him. He's missing his eyes. His poor nose has been chewed off. He's a mess. And that's kind of why I love him. All right. Awesome on the tree. It works. You can see there's only one of these missing. It's right here. These are super easy to find to buy so if you find a tree that doesn't have these you can order them on amazon or ebay super easy it was strange when i first picked this up i thought maybe it was a leather box it was brown it was all brown and when i started to clean it off the, the flowers actually came through which was neat it's in horrible condition i just love it because it looks like that and then these were out of a box of Christmas things. These were the only surviving ornaments. I think these are old, um, like shiny brights and they're beautiful, but I was only able to salvage 
two, four, five, and then this wonky one that I also love. And then this guy, he's very old. He's an ornament. Um, he's hay filled. So this is like cotton and hay, but he was cool. His arms kind of move. <laughs> um, man, he is a mess too, but I also love him. It's like a little cocoon Santa. Found this tin that I showed you, but I also found this other tin. It says Bauer and Black Junior Legion First Aid Kit, and it has some bandages and stuff inside of it. So that was pretty cool. And then I found this little guy. He had been glued and his head came off, but I am gonna try and clean up the glue a little bit and put him back together. I think he would sell really nicely with this tin as a little combination. Um, and I think his head will go back on nicely. So that'll be a little project for me. Underneath them, I did find some linens in the barn that I tried to salvage. Most of them were beyond um, salvaging. There was so much water damage. There is this piece here, but you can see it is moth eaten and stained. I think I've covered up the holes here. Um, but it is pretty. Somebody did this by hand and it's cute. So I am going to keep this piece. And then this is like a gorgeous, almost feels silk bonnet. Look at how pretty that is. Definitely looks to be Victorian. Very, very light and delicate but also in very good condition. I think it was kind of pressed between some of these other linen pieces and they kind of protected it over time. So very cool. A couple other things, um, found a little dragonware piece. These were popular souvenir pieces. I'm gonna say this is probably a 50s. This was from San Francisco. Um, you saw these guys, but you didn't see him. Just a figurine. He's not even a planter. He is a solid figurine. And then this guy, I think, is a Royal Copley. He is very solid. You can tell these are both American-made pieces because of how heavy they are. have no idea who this guy is. He's probably a toy... Um, from the 50s, maybe attached to some advertising, I'm not sure. Um, oh, right in front of me, <laughs> a fairy lamp, um, probably from the 60s. I think this is Stars and Bars, possibly. I'll have to look it up. And it's in great shape. There's no flea bites or anything. And I have two pieces of glass here. These look old and they look to have been painted at one point. I see little remnants of paint. But they are Easter bunnies. And it looks like they may have held candy at one point and screwed onto a base. There's two of them. So they're pretty cool. I found a little Attaboy harmonica from Germany, so that's kind of neat. Love the design in the top of this. The last thing that I found that I thought was very cool was this case, which has seen better days. It's definitely squished and crushed, but it has an old pair of eyeglasses in it. And they seem to be in pretty great condition. They need cleaned. I actually did not clean these yet, but they are so delicate and just kind of beautiful in the way that those glasses were cut. Very neat. And that was a cool find. It looks like a name on here. Robert G. Stepman, OD. So it looks like that was uh, an optometrist in Ashtabula, Ohio. But very cool. That is it. That is the rest of the haul. It is a lot, but how cool. Man, if you get an opportunity to go climbing around in a barn, 
this place, I was afraid I was going to fall through the floor. <laughs> but what we do for good antiques and find treasures, you know, risk our lives. <laughs> it was very hot up there, but we met early in the morning so we could tolerate a little bit of the heat before it got too hot and I could not be more happy. Unlike my other videos, I am not going to share the negotiated uh, price that I paid for all of this. Um, I worked to pull this stuff out. He knew that it was going to take some serious cleaning and um, research and listing <laughs> and he knew. Um, he was happy with what I gave him and I told him if I found something that was like a huge amazing rare thing that I would come back to him and even then he was like nope it's your treasure so <laughs> he did talk about getting buried with that bear so I might have to take that bear back <laughs> when when he passes and slip it in his casket <laughs> there was a joke about that and with that I will end this video I know it's gotten a little long if you're still around with me do me a favor down below leave me a comment that's something like um he took the good leg with him. <laughs> then I'll know you were here and uh, I will share some, uh, a little extra love with you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. If you got all the way to this point and you are not a subscriber, why the heck not? <laughs> hit that subscribe button. Hit the little bell a couple of times so that you know when I put up a new video a couple of times a week. Do me a favor, hit that like button or the dislike button. I don't mind. <laughs> and comment down below. Tell me what you saw that you were just amazed by or just say hello and then share this video out so we can continue to grow this cool Yoso Boho tribe. All right, everybody, take care. I will see you on Thursday. Bye.